Hello everyone, Mr. Lipchik here, and welcome to part three of our discussion on foreign policy, the Department of State and the Department of Defense. The Department of State. The Department of State was the first executive department to be created. The Secretary of State, who leads the State Department, ranks just below the Vice President. The mission of the Department of State is to promote the long-range security and well-being of the United States. The Department of State advises the President on foreign policy, formulates and carries out foreign policy, keeps the President informed about international issues, maintains diplomatic relations with foreign governments, and negotiates treaties with foreign governments, along with protecting the interests of Americans traveling or conducting business abroad. The structure of the Department of State. There are six assistant secretaries of state that direct six geographic bureaus. Bureau of African Affairs, European and Asian Affairs, East Asian and Pacific Affairs, Western Hemisphere Affairs, Near Eastern Affairs, and South Asian Affairs. Other bureaus are organized around foreign policy topics. There's a Bureau of Education and Culture, Political and Military Problems, and Intelligence and Research. More than half of the employees of the State Department are part of the Foreign Service. Serving in a foreign diplomatic post, as where most of them are, and they can be recalled to Washington to discuss diplomatic issues. This is a very prestigious branch of government. It's difficult to get into the Foreign Service. Uh, they have very high and demanding standards of their personnel and they can be assigned to embassies or consulates. An embassy is the official residence and offices of the ambassador to a nation and his or her staff. They keep the State Department informed and conduct daily diplomacy with the host nation. Some ambassadors are career diplomats and others are political appointees. The staff helps to resolve disputes over political, military, trade, travel, and currency. There is, if there is a major dispute, the embassy staff can be withdrawn for their safety or uh, to send a message to the other country. The embassy and its grounds are considered sovereign territory. So our embassies in four countries are considered U.S. territory and foreign embassies on U.S. soil are considered territory uh, belonging to those nations. The U.S. maintains consulates in major cities of foreign nations. Consulates are not usually involved in diplomacy, but instead help U.S. businesses and citizens in that country. The foreign service officer in charge of the consulate is called a consul. A passport is a document uh, issued by the State Department granting certain protections and privileges for traveling within certain countries. A visa is a special document issued by the country a traveler wishes to enter, allowing a foreign national to visit. Almost all travelers to the United States must have a visa from an American embassy or consulate in order to enter the country. The Department of, of Defense, or DOD, supervises the armed forces of the United States. They were established after World War II to supervise all military activity of the United States. Frequently, the different departments would not uh, get along with different branches. Uh, they would quarrel uh, and have differences, and this department was created to synchronize all of them. 
The Secretary of Defense is a member of the President's Cabinet. And all leaders of the Department of Defense are required to be civilians. Some of them are former military, but they must be have civilian status. Uh, because our government uh, does not uh, allow the military to dictate to the civilian government. It's the other way around. The DOD is controlled by Congress and the President. The DOD is the largest executive department. And it is broken down into departments of the Army, Navy, and Air Force. Each department is under the leadership of a civilian secretary, secretaries of the Army, Navy, and Air Force. And the Marine Corps falls under the jurisdiction of the Navy, as does the Coast Guard. The Joint Chiefs of Staff is made up of the top-ranking officers of the Armed Forces. Chief of Staff of the Army. Chief of Staff of the Air Force, and the Chief of Naval Operations, and the Commandant of the Marine Corps, and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff also is on this committee. The United States military has been a volunteer force since 1973. And that has largely to do with changing technologies, which makes a very large force unnecessary. President Nixon added conscript conscription, or the draft, as it was known, in 1973. Since 1980, however, all men who reach the age of 18 must register for the draft, although they are not currently drafting men into the military. But it is always a possibility. Men between the ages of 18 and 25 could be drafted in an emergency, and you are required to register when you are 18. If you don't, uh, you may lose certain things, such as the ability to get federal student loans. That concludes our discussion on the Department of State and the Department of Defense. Thank you for attending, and I look forward to seeing you in the live lesson. Have a great day.